Good evening, everybody. I'm Melanie Needle from the Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission. Um, thank you so much for making time in your evening to join us on the Button Up Vermont workshop. Um, just to let everybody know, everybody know this workshop is being recorded and it will be available on the Button Up Vermont webpage under events in a few days. Um, so this evening, we have um, Becca White from Efficiency Vermont. She's the customer engagement manager. We also have Michelle McCutcheon Shore. She's the lead um, community engagement um, staff focused on uh, helping energy committee members in Chittenden County. And then we also have Dwight DeCoster from the Champlain Valley Office of Economic Opportunity. Um, he's the director of weatherization, weatherization services. So I'm really excited to get this presentation kicked off. Um, Becca, Dwight, and Michelle have really exciting information to share with you all um, about weatherization and the really um, exciting savings and incentives that are available for all sorts of energy projects that you're looking to get involved in during this cold season. So with that, I will hand it over to Becca. Cool. Thanks so much, Melanie, and excited to be virtually in Chittenden County. Uh, I'm going to start sharing my screen to show the presentation. So hopefully you are all seeing a presentation now. And OK, I got thumbs up, so we're, we're in the clear. Uh, so this is a part of the Step Up to Button Up uh, regional presentation series that's happening throughout the state. Uh, and if you're familiar with Button Up, uh, my job uh, is to coordinate all the different energy committees and towns that are participating. Uh, and this is a way to uh, regionally bring together all the information that we have as a part of the weatherization education uh, part of the campaign. Um, similar to what we were trying to do last year in person, the goal is to give you some of the same tools in a virtual place. So I hope you uh, learn something new and I'll dive right in. Uh, and again, uh, if you have questions, uh, Melanie has kindly offered to monitor the chat. So if you have questions, um, if they feel like the right time to have them answered during the presentation, I'm happy to respond. Um, but I'll save a little bit of time at the end. Oh, you can see that I put topic as the second piece. So drum roll, please. Uh, it's on tips for renters and landlords. Uh, so that's the topic. Uh, a little bit about Button Up Vermont before I dive into that first section. Uh, it's a campaign that has a ton of different partners. So these are some of the organizations uh, that you might be familiar with that support uh, different energy uh, related uh, work throughout the state. We've also got uh, just about every utility company in the state or co-op is a part of the campaign. Uh, and then uh, on top of all of our different uh, electric utilities, we also have every regional planning commission uh, like the fabulous CCRPC. So uh, we've got a really good group of collaborators this year. Uh, so I'm going to be presenting this section for about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, so really a high level take on what weatherization is. Uh, and if you've got specific questions about your home or your setup, uh, one of the tools we have for the Button Up Vermont campaign this year are virtual home energy visits. So if you're not sure where to start and you're not thinking you're getting to a project this year, signing up for a virtual home energy visit, they're starting to be scheduled in January, that could be a really good opportunity for you. So we can talk a little bit about that later, but I did want to let you know you can get some specific guidance um, to go deeper in your home beyond this. So. This is my favorite slide of the whole presentation. I kick it off big. This is the analogy for what weatherization is. Uh, if you are like me and you went on a walk today uh, and did not bring a windbreaker, you're gonna understand this just from that activity, activity alone. So your sweater, like the one I'm wearing right now, that is similar to the insulation we would have in our homes. So 
even though you might have a nice warm sweater on and you're outside like me on my walk, you'll still have through those cable knits, uh, air will go through, cold air will flow through. Uh, so on top of my insulating sweater, I also want to bring a windbreaker, which represents our air sealing. So that air sealing removes those holes and it prevents that cold air from getting in and it keeps the hot air from getting out. So when you combine insulation and air sealing, you get the comfort and savings uh, with the same way you might your sweater and your windbreaker. I love that presentation slide. Uh, so what is buttoning up? Uh, so when we think about buttoning up our homes, uh, the first thing to know is that because of the principle of warm air rising, uh, when there are leaks or holes in your home, the hot air actually escapes through those holes. That can be out of your roof, your attic, those upper stories. And then just to make it even worse, that cold air and those drafts actually come through those leaks in the basement or lower stories. And we call that the stack effect. Uh, and those leaks actually make the insulation less effective. So even when you have insulation, that air movement reduces the effectiveness. Uh, some very common locations for leaks uh, would be a fan vent that can be in your kitchen, your uh, like your kitchen stove, uh, a dryer, a bathroom fan, uh, attic hatches, chimneys, recess lighting, outlets, any door or window, basements, uh, and any place where there's joints or corners where the walls or floor meet. So lots of places um, where air sealing uh, could be a benefit. Uh, next, you really want to think about uh, prioritizing uh, your insulation in relation to that analogy we used before, where that sweater would contact that windbreaker. So you want to prioritize insulation in all the places with those most common leaks. And this is a nice illustration of uh, some of those locations. So now that I've explained to you what weatherization is, that you're, co you're a complete guru now. You might not be Dwight DeCoster level, but you're getting there. <laughs> when you're thinking about buttoning up, uh, you're an expert, but there might not be clear reasons why you would want to weatherize even if you know the science behind it. So these are the four big reasons why you would wanna button up your home and the value that it can bring not only to you, but to the whole state. So the first reason, saving money. So comprehensive weatherization can save Vermont households quite a bit, especially on fuel costs. So historically households save about 15% after a project is completed. And even when we save money, you might be saving fuel costs for your home, you're also actually saving money for the state. Uh, and you're doing that because when we spend money on fossil fuels for heating, 78% of that actually leaves the state of Vermont. So you're not only saving money for you, you're essentially saving money for the entire Vermont economy by keeping it local. The next reason would be increase in comfort. And this is my caveat or my kind of guilt-free Becca pass on if you have a room in your home that you don't use for part of the year, you know what room I'm talking about, that you don't go into because it's either too cold or too hot. This is my past. You don't need to live like that. You can weatherize your home and you could use all the spaces that are available to you. So not only do you have more time probably being spent in your home, you also want to have spaces that are usable and comfortable. Uh, so comfort is a piece to weatherization that I just don't think we stress enough. Um, and at the same time, uh, you might have spaces in your home that you do use frequently, but just are uncomfortable. Uh, you might also see uh, an improvement in air quality uh, when you weatherize your home, which is really top of mind for a lot of us when we think about uh, better health for our families. Uh, the other two reasons are saving energy and reducing carbon pollution. And I always thought of those as the same thing, um, but they're actually different. So when we think about saving energy, uh, right now our heating for Vermont, our heating for homes and businesses makes up 42% of our total energy use as a state. And again, 78% of that leaves our state uh, with fossil fuel usage. So buttoning up our homes actually reduces that usage. 
Uh, and in addition to that energy savings, it also does have an impact on carbon pollution. So the less fuel we burn, the fewer pollutants actually end up in our atmosphere. And that's what's been contributing to climate change. Uh, as of 2015, 28% uh, of Vermont's greenhouse gas emissions came from heating our buildings. So that's the second largest uh, sector uh, to transportation. Uh, and just to hit you with that one more time, we have some statewide energy goals. So important to think about reducing carbon pollution. Okay, now that you're a weatherization expert, you're totally sold, you know why you wanna do it, how do you get started? Uh, well, you've got CBOEO on the presentation today to talk about the income eligible weatherization side of things. Uh, and I'll let I'll leave that to them. Uh, but in addition to income eligible weatherization, uh, which is about if you fall at or below 80% of the median income, that's when you would qualify. There is also two other options. There's comprehensive weatherization. Uh, which is really the best bang for your buck and you would work with an EEN home performance uh, and Energy Star qualified contractor. And then the last one is the do-it-yourself uh, angle. I'm not a handy person but I will say I'm going to talk about the list of things you can do to get the DIY rebate which is $100 uh, and I think even I uh, can pull off three of six of these. Uh, so I did want to show you as uh, we have tonight with us CBOEO. If you're in Chittenden County, that's your go-to community action agency for our for this region. Uh, if you're in Chittenden, if you're not in Chittenden County, and somehow you've joined tonight, uh, you might have a different regional support system for you. And uh, there they all are. Oh, trying to go to the next slide, and I can't click to the next slide. <laughs> Hey, there we go. Uh, so let's say income eligible weatherization is not the route that you're going to take. Uh, you could consider uh, that home performance with Energy Star program and a home energy loan might be right up your alley. So no interest financing is a key piece to the home energy loan, uh, depending on um, your income range. Uh, and for uh, many Vermonters, that low or no interest financing uh, is key to making projects work. So between the incentives, financing, you could pay uh, for a comprehensive project uh, for a very low monthly payment. And I'll just tie into that. It's not just weatherization that's eligible for these funds uh, or for this um, finance tool, uh, you could layer that in with other projects you might do. So if you've got a few things that you're trying to do, maybe change how you heat or cool your home, uh, this would be a part of it. Uh, and I have had questions about health and safety being uh, associated with the home energy loan. And if you need more details about that, I'm happy to answer questions on that as well. And, uh, just to wrap up the do-it-yourself piece, if you do any of those three, any of the three of the six listed here, you could get $100 back. Uh, and the do-it-yourself rebate is a great way to just kind of get your foot in the door and start those projects, especially as we spend more time indoors. Uh, it's a great opportunity to both see what you need to work on, fix some things now, and then also start to think for the future what other things you might want to address with a comprehensive weatherization program, with the comprehensive weatherization program. And you can find more information on the Button Up website, uh, and we also have info um, at efficiencyvermont.com. Uh, so I'll wrap this section up before I talk a little bit about tips for renters and landlords. Uh, but what you can do next is you can give a call over to customer support here at Efficiency Vermont. You could schedule a free virtual home energy visit, uh, which again, those are scheduling out into January. Uh, you could also go to the find a contractor page on the Efficiency Vermont site and you'd be able to connect with um, many different uh, great contractors in your area. You could uh, call uh, CBLEO and if you are a Burlington resident, it's important to know that you can call Burlington Electric Department uh, and check out information on their website for their program offerings. So if you're a Burlington resident, good to know BED is, a, is the resource for you as well. Okay, so I'm gonna run through 
Uh, this part will take about 10 minutes. I'm going to talk a bit about uh, renters and landlords and tips uh, that you can use. Uh, and I'll just start this section. Oh, do we have any questions? Sorry, I'm, I didn't want to. I see nothing. Hi, Becca. I haven't heard, I haven't seen any questions come in the chat. Thanks for checking. Perfect. I was like, before I keep on going, might as well pause. Uh, so I'll just start this section by saying uh, that uh, renters, landlords, supporting them is something that Efficiency Vermont has been working on for a long time. Uh, and we are developing programs around multifamily uh, units around supporting renters and landlords. And this is really a high level overview. Uh, and uh, things are always, uh, we're always working on them and trying to improve them. So uh, important thing to know here. We haven't, uh, we haven't quite cracked the nut yet on this one, but I think we're getting there. And I'd love uh, to hear from folks uh, if this presentation is helpful. Okay, so if you're a renter, you might think that there are not a lot of things that you can do in your home uh, that don't uh, require, uh, th that you wouldn't be able to do. Uh, well, there actually are a whole bunch of things that you can do as a renter uh, to save energy. The first is if your apartment or house has its own thermostat, you can set the temperature down by seven, 10 degrees for eight hours a day. So that could be when you're sleeping uh, or if you happen to be one of the select few who doesn't work from home anymore, uh, you might do that when you're away. Uh, you could also make sure that the light bulbs in your most commonly used spaces like your kitchen, living room, make sure that all of those are LED. Uh, it's a higher quality lighting that will actually last longer and save you on utility bills. Uh, next, you could make, uh, you could remove dust buildup on your refrigerator and heating systems, and that will actually help your system perform better so that you're paying less to heat your home. Uh, and that will actually improve the air quality and safety as well. Uh, if you want to watch a fun video, we've got one on how to uh, vacuum out your bathroom fan, for example. Uh, it is a gross but rewarding process to clean these spaces. So Highly recommend if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, you can add weather stripping to windows and doors, and that can help keep drafts out and heat in for the winter. Uh, you could also, uh, for appliances, let's say your TV, for example, a lot of appliances have idle mode, which continues to draw power even when you're not actually using it. Uh, so either unplugging those items or turning off a power strip. Uh, when you're not in the room or not using those devices uh, is a great way to save energy. And then finally, uh, you could use curtains or shades on your windows. Uh, in summer, uh, you would close those curtains on the windows when you're getting a lot of sun throughout the day. And in the winter, you actually do the opposite. You want to get that sun into that room uh, to heat things up. Okay. So I talked a lot about weatherization at the beginning. Uh, and when it comes to weatherization, renters are still eligible for the weatherization assistance program and that do-it-yourself rebate. Uh, and rented single family homes can qualify for the comprehensive weatherization offers, uh, the ones that Efficiency Vermont has. So there's also our building performance program, which helps with multi-unit and multi-family residents. Uh, and you'll actually need your landlord's permission to move forward with any of those solutions. Uh, but in many cases, uh, they would be responsible for the upfront cost of a project and then would receive the incentive. Uh, so we can help you figure out which solution might be best for you uh, in your housing situation, but there are options if you're a renter or a landlord. Okay, so that's really the wrap up uh, to tips for renters and landlords. Uh, and this slide is great uh, because I think it really does say it all. Uh, if you're not sure where to start, whether it is with weatherization, like I talked about earlier, or you're a renter or a landlord, we're here to help. So give us a call. Uh, it's no fun to not know how to start a project, but uh, Efficiency Vermont is happy to assist uh, and uh, help you get the ball rolling. So there we go. I can hand it over to Dwight. <laughs> 
to wait. You're muted. <laughs> hey, darn it. That's twice today. <laughs> um, hey, everybody. Thank you, Becca, for uh, that great presentation. Uh, so we are going to jump right into uh, CBOO and our low income uh, weatherization program. So. Go forward. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to talk a little bit about our program in general. And then I'm going to give you a case study of a, a, a recent project we had, the type of work that we did, and uh, some of the benefits that we expect to see out of that. So, all right. So, what? How does our program work? Uh, well, we're based on we're income eligible. We're funded by the uh, Department of Energy and more by the State of Vermont's Home Weatherization Assistance Program. Uh, we really uh, are soup to nuts. Um, once you've been determined eligibility or the clients have been determined that they are, they're eligible, the very first person you're gonna see is an efficiency coach and they're gonna uh, target the electrical side of things. Uh, we are the field implementers for EVT's um, program and Efficiency Vermont's program. But that coach is, he's gonna change light bulbs, look at appliances to see if we can switch those out for you um, or the client. And we're gonna give the homeowner some really good coaching about how they can change their habits if they want to, to get even greater savings. So, and once those appliances are all in, then the next person you're gonna see is an energy audit. And they're gonna look at the thermal side, all that building science, the stack effect and where you're losing your heat and, and how we can uh, air seal and insulate your home in order to make it better. So he's going to go back to the, the our auditor is going to go back and he's going to do a lot of uh, science stuff and figure out where you're losing your heat from and how leaky your building is because we've done a blower door and he's going to write up a full scale energy audit. Okay, yep. Slide, I should have been going on the slide. I'm going off to one. So go to the next one. There we go. So they're going to gather energy performance information and determine the most cost effective energy improvements. Our program is driven off that we need to save a dollar for every dollar we spend. Um, so if you happen to be in a rental situation and you qualify and your property owner is working with us, you're going to get two visits. The first one will be uh, with your property owner and then the second one in a walkthrough of what we may be able to do so the property owner understands exactly what's going to happen to his building. Also, more importantly, we get buy-in from that property owner to understand how the work that we are going to do for him or her will uh, make the longevity of their house much greater and lower their overall maintenance costs. Um, we do require homeowners or property owners in a rental situation to kick in some of the funds for what I call the code type stuff, electric, um, if there's necessary there the heating system and some ventilation stuff. But we're pretty good at selling what we do and we get a lot of buy-in from our property owners and they'll do, they'll ask us after the first property, hey, I've got another property, how do we go about that? So we're pretty good at getting buy-in. So, and then we're gonna do that in-depth energy performance and write it up. So once the audit is written up, we're gonna send out our great crew of folks. Next slide, Becca. Uh, and do the energy retrofit. Our professional crews, uh, we've got folks on staff that have been doing it for 20 plus years, uh, very experienced, uh, very uh, mission oriented, I'll say, uh, to do the best job for our clients. Um, they're gonna come and install all those measures that the auditor has recommended. And I'll talk about those sort of measures in the case study. Um, and most projects typically take between two and five days to complete. We are gonna interrupt every aspect of your day uh, when we come in. It's, uh, it's quite intrusive, but at the end, uh, the finished product is well worth it. A safer, healthier, more energy efficient home. So, so once we're done the work, we have a staff member that's been in the weatherization program for 36 years, uh, Mr. Larry Martel. He's gonna come out and make sure that Every, the, everybody from the energy coach, the energy auditor, and the crew did everything exactly right. And we are leaving your house in safe condition. It's, he will, he is very good at finding things that we miss. So 
no stone unturned. And uh, I sleep well at night because of Larry. So that's our quality control inspection. And then I think we're on next slide. And so what is the impact of that work? Um, in the statewide, in the past six years, we've done 66, over 6,600 homes. Um, in the past program year, 900 homes were weatherized at the average cost of $8,500. Um, 12 of that went to those health and safety things I measured, I mentioned, heating, ventilation, um, and those sorts of things. The average estimated savings were very conservative and we say 24%. So if you're spending $1,000 on your heating bill, uh, we're gonna get to $250 back per year about. So uh, in program year 19 for CVOO, we weather we weatherized 213 homes in Franklin, Grand Isle, Chittenden, and Addison counties. Slide. So I'm going to jump right into a case study that we had. And this, is, this one came to us in an interesting way. It didn't really come to us through the normal channels. Um, we were referred to this house by Colchester PD for a visible hole in the roof from the exterior. There was a, a dinner plate size hole, big hole in the roof. Um, so the, my uh, colleague from CPD called me up and he said, Dwight, help, I need help, what can you do? Well, I have a little bit of pot of money that I got and I uh, got one of our contractors to get over there that day and patch the hole. Um, so that was the start of it. And then we had the, that individual reluctantly fill out our paperwork. He didn't really want the help. He, and we find that a lot with our clients that, you know, some of our elderly clients, I've done it myself my whole life. I don't really want to. And we just simply tell them, listen, you've been paying taxes. You've been paying these taxes in your whole life. And now it's time for you to get some of it back. And that usually does the trick in about 99% of the cases we can we get them to fill out the paperwork and make sure they're eligible. Um, did I mention this is all at no cost to the client? So it's, uh, it, this is totally free if you're income eligible. So we sent over the energy coach. As I said before, he did the, the man side. Um, he did some bulbs, some, uh, some CO work and, and put in CO and smoke detectors, which were not present in the home, not working. And he installed a heat pump hot water heater, uh, pulled out an old electric that this individual had been renting from GMP for a very long time, paid for it many times over. Um, but we went ahead and pulled it out, put in a heat pump, hot water heater. And for a single person living in a home, that is gonna, his energy costs are gonna go way, way down and he's not gonna have any rental charges. So that's a good thing. We also had a grant program where we did falls prevention um, that we uh, team up with Efficiency Vermont as well as the uh, Medical Center Hospital of Vermont in a, grant, in a uh, pilot program. So we did some lighting for him in dark areas where he might fall. We put in grab bars uh, for a shower, like um, so he didn't fall getting in and out of the shower. And we also, he had not been into his basement to do like things like laundry and such for, he said three to five years because there was no lights down there and there was no railings to the basement. So he didn't feel safe. So that's just an add on on the healthy home side of things that we do. So um, once we got that done, we moved on to the, the energy auditor went out. And these are things that are pretty much commonplace in every typical story and a half Cape in Vermont. Uh, we say that we can go into any home that was built last week and find things to do that make it more weatherized. Um, so make it more energy efficient. So the things that we did, we're gonna do a clean and tune. The furnace did not have enough return air, so it wasn't efficient. It wasn't moving the air properly and was going to prematurely fail because of that. Uh, there was a, ma a massive amount of duct leakage that we were going to repair, lacking attic insulation, uh, untreated knee wall areas, the doors were leaky, uh, missing interior finish and upstairs where the leak had caused a big hole in, so there was a direct, like a chimney through the sheetrock and out the roof. Um, that, oh, by the way, raccoon, a family of raccoons had moved into. Um, there were broken windows in the garage door. Basement windows were single pane. 
Sills had no air sealing or insulation and there was no functioning bath and kitchen there. So that's what we found. And next slide. So these are some uh, photos of this home. And I wish I had a pointer. I'd show you exactly where that hole is. But if you look at the roof on the top picture, just to the left of the tree, there you go. That's where the hole in the roof was. And if you look to the left of that, you'll see that's the raccoon entrance. Um, so, yep. And then top right, there's the windows we were talking about that are single pane um, that we were gonna, we're gonna do something about and I'll show you that in a minute. And if you go to the middle picture, um, you can see on the left side and the bottom how that insulation looks all um, not in line with each other. And then if you look on the floor, there's not very much insulation there. And this is actually an after picture. I didn't have a good before picture. And you'll see, if you look to the top, you'll get a hint of what we're gonna do, uh, what we did. So now if you go to the bottom left picture, you'll see there's why you have massive duct leakage because some of the ducts are broken um, and pumping air where they're not supposed to be. And then it's obviously not getting to where you want the air to go. And then there's a picture of on the right-hand side there. Uh, again, you see leaky return um, to the right, a little bit right, Becca, there you go. A leaky return system. We can, we can connect virtually and get pointers where we need them. <laughs> so that's what we had uh, in the before situation. Um, are there any questions, um, did Melanie? Any questions come up on that? Uh, there is one question um, about uh, income eligibility. Allison is asking, can you share what the current income eligibility is for the CBOEO program? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refer you to our website at cboeo.org. And right in the middle of the page, you'll see our programs and weather eyes. They change yearly, so I don't commit them to memory and it changes by size of family and county. So Chittenden Counties is right there. Um, it's on our cboeo.org. If you click on the weatherization button, that's right in the middle, and then go to the left-hand column, you'll see qualifications, and that will give you the most accurate uh, amounts at the time for the area that you live in and also the size of your family. So hopefully that answers Allison's question. I will put the link in the chat. Oh, Michelle beat me to it. <laughs> Thanks, you guys, Michelle. You guys are awesome. Uh, so next slide, please. So again, auditor's recommendations. I listed the defects before. So the auditor went in and found all those things. And what these are what he's rec going to recommend and that the program is going to pay for at, again, if I didn't mention it before, which I think I did, at no cost to these income eligible clients. Uh, we're gonna clean, tune, and evaluate the he heating system. Make sure it's running properly. Make sure it's not kicking out carbon uh, monoxide, a harmful, odorous, colorless gas. And, uh, and then we're gonna make sure that's all good to go. We're gonna add a 10 inch return to the furnace from the kitchen to make sure that it's, not, it's getting enough return air, not starving itself off not going to prematurely die. Um, we're going to air seal all those return ducts and plenums with mastic, uh, which makes sure that the heated air is going exactly where we want it to, and it's doing what it's supposed to do. We're going to open blow the attic with 10 inches of cellulose, um, weather strip and door sweep all exterior doors. We're going to patch that big hole in the second floor ceiling because that was, a, that was making our blower door really high. Um, as was the missing glass that we found. We created insulated removable window plugs for the basement. So in the fall time, now that he can go downstairs with his new, uh, with his new banister and lighting, he can take those in and out, take them out for the summer if he wants to get light down there or uh, fresh air. And in the winter time, you can just pop them right back in They're friction fit, no, no hardware to deal with. Uh, we created an air, we're going to create an air barrier at roof plane in the knee wall areas. I'll explain that better with a picture. Uh, type R strap and dense pack cellulose in the stamp, slant roof areas. I think we already, we already showed you a picture of that. Air seal and insulate the sill areas and then replace existing bath fan. And we're going to put in a smart switch. A smart switch runs the fans for a set 
amount of time per hour to ensure that we get uh, nice clean air coming in to replace the bad air that's going out. And then we also revented the dryer and bath van um, to ensure that we're not building moisture in areas and we're getting rid of the moisture that is created in the home so we don't have moisture problems, i.e. mold and mildew. So that's what the auditor said we were gonna do. And he gave that work order to the crews and they went out and we're gonna show you what they did. Starting at the top left and working our way across, there's mastic on the ducts. You can see how we sealed up every joint with mastic. If you look at our, you can see a window plug there. No, nope, there's no window plug in there. Um, actually there is, but it's from the outside. Um, and then above you see where the sill work is. There's, you can see the high R insulation to the right a little bit, there you go. And we put in a high R plug in there, we foam sealed it in and there's insulation behind that, either six inches of fiberglass or blown cellulose, I think in this case, cellulose. To the right of that is that brand new uh, heat pump hot water heater that we put in. Um, very energy efficient, much more efficient and best is it doesn't burn fossil fuels. Um, we Another one of our big goals, we weather stripped and door, and door sweep that front door. As you can see, you can see the weather strip, door sweep is on the inside. There's that faint and starting in the middle row on the left, there's that fancy uh, new railing that we popped in so he could access his basement. There's his brand new bathroom fan. And you can see that there had been some moisture issues and that we were taking care of. Um, if you look, that one is vented out properly. If you look, uh, and it's in a much more advantageous position to remove the moisture. There's one to the left a little bit that you can see why that probably wasn't removing all of the moisture. Uh, there's a weather strip on that door right there. You can see from the inside. The picture on the bottom, that's the uh, slant insulation you can see there. They put a uh, tie bar across it, strapped it so it was nice and uh, it was gonna stay there a long time. Blew it with cellulose, dense packed it, and then foamed it up. And uh, then you can see on the next picture, the gable ends, we did the same thing. And you'll notice that we did not do anything to that um, knee wall floor because we've changed the, where the thermal boundary goes and we've made it much more uh, easily defined, uh, and much better product. So. Um, next slide. So a little pre and post comparison for you. Um, we talked about that air leakage rate or CFM 50. We determined that with our blower door. Um, before it was 4,272. And that was after we fixed the roof, the hole in the roof. So I'm, you know, giving her, I'm cutting myself off a little bit there, but afterwards, that we dropped it by 50% to 2160 CFM 50. That's a pretty good uh, reduction right there. But more appropriately, you can look at the next set of numbers is the BTU per square foot for heating degree day. That's the, 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 uh, the gas mileage of the house, so to speak. Um, how, how efficient is it? Previously, it was burning six and a half BTUs per square foot for heating degree day. After we were done, it was at 4.02 BTUs per square foot per heating day. So we improved our gas mileage of the house, improved our energy efficiency by 38%. So above that 24 I said before. So this was a really effective house. Um, we're saving 48.84 million BTUs in the lifelong, in the life of the measure. So that's, that's huge. And now the cost of the day. So weatherization costs, we spent $7,470. Efficiency of Vermont, including the heat pump hot water heater, we spent $2,025. And the falls prevention program, railings, lighting and such was $151.98. So, um, so what does that all mean? We're gonna save 196 gallons of fuel oil a year. So about $400 um, of combined client money and uh, fuel assistance money. And so, you know, that's about, well, I, here I use the $1.75, but you know, it's about 400, 350 
$400 a year uh, cost, energy cost saved for that client. Um, and that's per year. And the life of the measures is, you know, some of them are um, out to the life of the home. Some are, you know, we say that weather strips and door sweeps, door sweeps should be replaced every seven years. So um, next slide. So that's mine. That's all I got. I'm, I'm happy to take questions now. If that's... And if not, I have questions for Dwight too. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I was going to say, I did really well and there are no questions. But... <laughs> well, I just had one question. Um, which was, you said that there's a normal process, or you said that this individual didn't come to you through the normal process. And I was wondering, do you typically get folks, th so folks just reaching out and filling out the information and, and signing up for the program, or are there other more common ways that you get um, folks to sign up for the free weatherization services? There are two real ways that we get majority of our clients. Well, three ways, um, word of mouth, you know, uh, energy, I'm educating a lot more energy committees. Um, and oh, by the way, if you want me to come to your energy committee, I will gladly come to any of them in my territory. And I'll make sure that if you're not in our territory, we'll get one of the other directors or staff members from those organizations to come. Um, but word of mouth is our number one way. We do a fuel assistance mailing, which is the second way. Um, but third way is once we do a, once we weatherize a home, we ask our clients to give us feedback. And the very last question we ask is, um, which I think is one of the most important questions is, are any of your neighbors or friends that you can think of that would need our service? We very seldom get one back which, uh, without a recommendation. So we take that as a compliment. That makes sense. Yeah. And we get a lot of them that way. So those three ways, and then that's the normal way. You send in an application and, and we get you on the, on the list. Um, occasionally we get one from an energy committee that, um, that will ask us for help and with a certain client and we get them an application and we, we put them in the wait list and, and we get them going. But we are, we will, we will provide applications to any energy committee that would like them. Um, cause we want to make sure that we're getting the broadest, uh, the broadest spread across everywhere. I see one question in the chat, um, which I, I have my version of an answer for, which is the question is, how can I weatherize my garage door? And I have, oddly enough, this question came up earlier in the week on a different Button Up Vermont event. And I have the answer that is not very satisfying that I can give, um, which is, you know, I guess the first question would be if it's an all glass door or like what the what the construction of the door is. And then after connecting with Matt Sargent, who's one of our energy consultants at Efficiency Vermont, he suggested uh, storm panels for winter time. So, okay, it's an old wind door with four windows. Yeah, I, I don't know besides that one time time I got the answer from Matt this like recently that suggested storm panels. I don't know. If well, I would make sure that your windows are cocked in and there's no, you know, they're not rattling. So they're nice and tight. So there's no air coming around then. And then they do sell a garage door um, weather strip kit. Um, so it's similar to what goes on a front door, only it allows the door to operate. Um, so weather strip the edges and uh, make sure that all of your connections of your panels are that don't you know, that don't need to move are cocked and uh, that's about the best you can do with a garage door without replacing it. Um, Joe, I see a question on the chat. Joe is asking, 
about the example home you described, did you say there's no cost to the homeowner for all that work that was done? That is correct. For income eligible clients um, that own the home, there is no cost to them. Um, in a rare occasion where they have deferred maintenance costs, like a new roof needs to be put on or, and we don't have the funds at that point because we have specific funds for home repairs um, and they're able to, we may ask them to kick in for those sorts of things. But for weatherization, there is no costs whatsoever to income eligible clients. You're welcome, Joe. Okay, well, I'm not seeing any more questions, so I'm happy to, I was gonna put in the chat the link to schedule a virtual free home energy visit. Uh, and then I'm, if we have a moment, I'd love to take the opportunity to mention the Share the Warmth campaign, um, which is the Button Up Vermont Fund uh, if you are someone who uh, can have the ability to share some warmth, uh, this year for Button Up, we have a fundraiser to support income eligible weatherization in a very specific way, which is to help give funds uh, to support projects that typically Dwight couldn't use his current funding source to cover. Uh, that would be something like vermiculite remediation, for example. So if you're a Vermonter who has the capacity to donate um, to this type of fund, highly recommend it uh, to share the warmth with your neighbors. And I know that uh, it's exciting. We've raised just about uh, $52,000 uh, so far for the campaign. So pretty cool. And I'll put the link in there. Oh, and then I see a question. Are there any rebates at this time to replace windows? Uh, from Efficiency Vermont, the answer is no. Um, but I'm happy to share a link uh, to some information on when you might actually want to do some weatherization instead of replacing windows. One of the main reasons that there is not um, a current rebate to replace windows is because typically it's actually not the most cost effective choice. Um, so I can give you some information on that. Um, and then ultimately if replacing windows is something that really falls um, as a must do. Um, there's some resources as well on that. So I'll go ahead and find that. Becca, this is Melanie. Can you talk a little bit about the virtual energy visit and um, in particular for energy committees, um, if and how they can promote those visits with their communities and, and their residents in their communities? Sure. Uh, so I think I didn't, I can't remember if I did an intro to Michelle, so I'm gonna do it in case I did not, um, which is uh, not only do you have this great button up Vermont campaign where you can spread news about the visit. You also have a great person on the call today, um, my colleague Michelle McCutcheon Shore, who is going to be able to proactively talk to you about other things as well. So I'll talk about uh, ways you can support the home energy visits, but that's not your only option moving forward, even when the button up campaign ends. So the virtual home energy visits uh, are something new that we're trying out. Uh, in part because of COVID-19, um, but it actually seems to be a good tool if you're the kind of person who, um, you know, might not necessarily want someone to come over to your house anyway. You have a great use of a smartphone. You can walk around your home or a smart device uh, and point out specific things that you might want to have addressed with an energy consultant. Uh, and we've got a community partners page on the Button Up website, which has some stock posts. So if you're an energy committee and you want to post on Facebook or from Porch Forum or maybe a town email list that you frequent, um, there's a stock post that you can use with the link to schedule a virtual home energy visit. And we have up to 500 of those available throughout the state uh, for the button up campaign. And the 
important thing to know about those visits is since they are scheduling out into January, if you're talking to a community member who really wants to do something right away, they might want to consider doing the find a contractor route first, going to that web page. But they could do those things at once. They could schedule a visit, look into the find a contractor at the same time. Or if they're really not sure that they're going to do a project uh, in the next few months and are comfortable waiting, it's a great option. Um, and it's a starting point to have a neutral person, um, a third party person from Energy uh, Efficiency Vermont, uh, who can answer questions for you uh, on a whole host of things, not just weatherization, but appliances, uh, energy savings, and all sorts of those broad questions you might have. So I'll put in the chat that Windows piece and the Community Partners page. Thanks, Becca. Yeah. yeah, and I just, as Becca referenced, my name is Michelle McCutcheon Shore, and I'm the community manager that supports um, any energy committee in Chittenden County who's looking for efficiency Vermont information or resources, or if you want ideas of things to do outside of Button Up, I'm here to help. So I'm going to throw my email in um, the chat so that if anyone wants to reach out to me after this, just to talk about maybe some resources I could provide or some ideas for you. Um, again, outside the button up campaign that your energy committee is looking to do, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm here to help um, specifically around any of our services or programs. Well, on that note, <laughs> yeah if there's any final questions i think this was good i learned a lot too thank you all for attending thanks ccrpc for putting this on by the way you've got a really solid regional planning commission chinden county so lucky you <laughs> you're very lucky <laughs> Okay. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, so, I just, um, just uh, send myself or Michelle or Becca or Dwight an email. Um, if you guys have any questions, our email addresses are pretty easy to find on our website. Um, and take care. Stay warm. I'm just, gonna throw my, I'm just throwing my email up in here. And again, if you have questions about low income weatherization, Give me a call or email and we can schedule a visit to your energy committee vid, uh, meeting. Cool. It just started snowing outside here, so. Oh. <laughs> Good to have this conversation. Yeah, button up, <laughs> like it's coming. <laughs> button up, it's happening. Cool. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Later.